Well, guys, as you can see, today we have a little bit something interesting. I have a stick that I'm holding in my hand at the moment with a whole bunch of leaves on it and a little white cocoon in the center. So this is a cocoon of, uh, I don't know, I'll show you the name right here. Just did a Google search. It's like a sep sepatoria or kepta, septa something moth. And they're really pretty. They, they have really pretty a color. And I actually found this as a caterpillar. And you can't very well tell. If we put it in the sun, you can kind of see the caterpillar in there. Um, the a outline of it, at least. If we put it directly in the sun how about that there we go all right it's directly in the sun and you can kind of see the outline I could see it so much better from my perspective you really can't see it that well um, but inside there is a really cool looking caterpillar and here here it is uh, for you obviously the one picture I did take the the others are just random photos from off the internet and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, uh, well, it was a caterpillar. I meant to put it in a cool little enclosure, feed it a bit, but it obviously was ready to crystallize or cocoon or whatever you call it for a uh, caterpillar. This is going to turn into a really cool looking moth. Um, and so I'm going to put it in this tank right here out of the, out of the uh, sun or out of the rain. Obviously, I don't want it to get soaked or anything. And uh, <clears throat> I'm going to look up how long it takes uh, to hatch or whatever morph or whatever out of its cocoon and then I will uh, get back to you once it's a really giant cool looking moth and it's not a real it's not a destructive pest I mean it eats trees but there's by no means so many of them that it's going to cause any real damage so uh, yeah that'll do it they are they are uh, um, I don't know about the moth but the caterpillar has like sort of a poisonous its blood is poisonous, apparently, and if you agitate it enough, it can actually excrete blood, its own blood from its pores or something, which can irritate your skin and give you a runny nose or, like, make your eyes run or whatever. You know, like, run, like water come out of them or something. I don't know, but I'm going to stick it in this little aquarium aquarium here and uh, pick it back up, uh, I don't know, when it, when it hatches. So, uh, yeah, this will be pretty cool if it, if it comes through. If not, oh well, but, uh, yeah, well, we'll see you guys in a bit. Uh, yeah, so that'll do it. One eternity later. Guys, here we, we have it still. Um, this is many, many months later. It's spring now, and, um, I was wondering if it would hatch. So I brought it in the house. We've been having some warm days, and it has not come out yet, and it seems like it's dried up in there. So what I'm going to do is cut it open and see what it looks like on the inside of it. First thing to notice upon opening it up is, as you can see, there's this papery layer that I've peeled apart now. And what's left underneath is like a little cocoon. Alright guys, and here's what we left with. So this is the little cocoon that I've cut open. And as you can see here, we're left with this, uh, I mean, the lighting is horrible. It's really hard to tell, but as you can see, um, you kind of have the shape of a moth. Um, Right there would be those huge antenna, and here's a picture right here, and uh, it's those antenna right there. You can kind of see the shape or the look of them, and then uh, you kind of have the abdomen has developed a little bit, and I guess you could see what might have turned into wings along the back. You could see the antenna a lot better there, and what's actually really cool is I was wondering what this little piece here was. Well, that is actually the skin of the caterpillar that was peeled off inside before it became that which I thought was pretty cool so I mean here's a picture of the caterpillar you can kind of see some of the resemblance like specifically that little orange dot right on there oh it's gonna focus no maybe yeah you can kind of see that orange spot there you go that orange spot there that was on the caterpillar so anyway unfortunately it didn't survive but uh but I still think it was pretty cool to open this up, and I'll probably be keeping this in my collection of cool things. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Peace.
All right, guys, so we're back. Uh, I just did a little bit of research, and apparently this here Cacropia moth is alive. But not for long, because I just killed it. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, apparently, it, this, it doesn't need the cocoon to pupate. Um, butterflies that chrysalize, you can't cut open the chrysalis because the chrysalis is the case. But if you were to relate that to moths, then this pupa that I have here, what's in, what is inside, like that is the living moth. So this moth is actually alive. And the reason I know that it's alive is because this. I don't know how well you can see here, but uh, it really creeps me out to hold this thing. It's like a little alien. But if you hold this, and then um, apparently, I just watched a video, you just boop it like that, and then it goes back into place, which means it's alive. And you can do this safely without hurting it. Now apparently, the Cacropia moth is the only moth that you can remove from the chrysalis, or from the cocoon, like I just did, without hurting it. So now I'm going to take this pupa, and I'm going to put it in a safe, dry, and warm place, and apparently, it will still be able to hit turn into the Cacropia moth fine. So I thought it must be dead. But apparently, as you can see when I move this, see how it moves just a little bit? It's still alive. So they'll actually be completely shriveled up and dried up when they're dead. So apparently it needs daylight, so sunlight and warmth in order to, oh, there it is moving way better when I pinch like that. So this is actually very fascinating to me, but this is completely safe. Cutting it out of there is completely fine. It doesn't hurt the Cacropia moth at all. This is just very fascinating to me. Anyway, pick you up then. I lied. I'm back really quick, but that's because I set this really cool little thing up. So I took, I took the uh, papery cocoon, and I cut it to make a little basket, and then I put it in there. I'm going to put it in this dish with the top shifted a little bit so it can stay with oxygen. It doesn't suffocate or get too hot in there. I'm going to go put it by a window, and... Uh, yeah, I can't wait. I'm so excited to see what will happen with this little guy. Well, guys, it's been a little while longer, and uh, the Cacropia moth hatched yesterday evening. What time was it? Or what day was it? It's a better way to put it. The 21st? Yeah. Yesterday was the 21st, and it hatched, and here we are, the 22nd, and I'm going to show it to you. Here is the Cacropia moth. I'm going to get it into some better lighting I'll let you see it because it looks really darn cool. But here's where it's at right now. I have a little heat lamp up here because I got this right from outside. And since we had snow yesterday, after a bunch of 80 degree weather the last couple weeks, um, a lot of snow too. It wasn't just a little. It was pretty cold. And I didn't want to put them straight into this. So I put the heat lamp on there and then put him in there to warm the area up. Now, his wings are a little crumpled. I think that's because... He hatched into this little thing, and uh, he couldn't really spread himself out the way he needed to when he first hatched. But here is the remnants of his hatch. As you can see, this thing here is uh, looks pretty much the same, other than the top has been cracked open because it came out of it. Pretty weird. And there's like a bunch of goop down there from when it came out, which is kind of gross. And, uh, but yeah, so that's, yeah, that's that. That's pretty cool. Let me pull him out and show him to you a little better. He'll try and fly away, I'm sure. So I, I got it out on a horrible angle to record it. Uh, I can't move my hand at all. Well, I guess we could do that. There's the bottom side of it. Pretty cool. It has a really weird speckled abdomen. Really pretty colors. Um, I really can't record it anywhere else because it's, there we go. That's a little better. Look at that. So there it is standing in my hand. Not the largest of them, but still a very large moth. Um, I want to put them down on something else. But I don't want to hurt them, so give me a second. There we are. I put it on a knife here. As you can see, it's still waving its wings. I know they do that to regulate the body temperature so they can fly better. They are nocturnal. So last night, it was really trying to fly around, but I think since it's daytime, it's not trying to do much because they could get eaten by many different things. So, here it is. Very pretty butterfly. If we could get it in some sunlight, it might even look 
Oh, actually, not a butterfly. It is a moth. The largest moth in North America. There it is. Pretty darn cool. Now, based on my research, this here. Oh, poor lighting there. Let's see. Um, here we go. Oh, that's good. Now, if it'll just focus on him. Oh, that is so freaking cool. That right there is a male. And uh, it's because he has those very large antenna. The females have antenna, but they're much smaller. Now, this is so that the males can track the female pheromones or something. Oh, there it goes. There it is sitting on me. I'm going to go put it back into its enclosure. Tomorrow I'm going to set it free. So I'll show you that when we let him free tomorrow. It's, like I said, it's pretty cold. So tomorrow it's supposed to warm up. And I'll let him go then. See you guys in a minute. Well, guys, here we have the Cecropia moth and a bunch of friends all over the place. Um, we're going to let it go here in a second. I don't know if I'll capture the release because I have a bunch of little kids here that want to see it. They may just get away. But uh, if not, here's the last picture of it. Um, there's my hand next to it. It's not the biggest of them all, but it is still a very pretty moth. And uh, I think it's very, very spectacular. It is a male based on my uh, calculation. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to let it go here in a second. We'll let everyone look at it through the window first. We got room for one girl in my hands. I held you earlier when I first got here. Woo! Where'd it go? It's right here. Did it fly down or did it fall? It's kind of fallen. He's not so good at flying yet. <laughs> he hasn't had much practice. Fly down. Is he cool? No, not cool. He's just getting his wings ready to go. Can't see. Can't see? Well, maybe you got to go down. Yeah. I can see. Oh, has well. he been inside? Like, yeah, he has. Outside he has. At all? He has not been outside at all. This is his oh, first time. <laughs> I just want to pet him, but you can't pet a moth, can you guys? Yep, not supposed to touch the wings. They're very fragile, as Ooh, you can see. We have a book about the moth that kept flying into the fire, don't we? And its wings got burned. Uh -huh. Yeah. I don't know. Rebecca, remember I don't that? Know, it, was it like it thought it was the most beautiful? Oh. Or something? Maybe. Was it scary? Was it one of those? Uh, yeah. Well guys, as seems to be a theme in life, I missed the shot. However, he did fly straight up into the air, off in the distance. It was really spectacular to behold, and overall a very rewarding experience. If you enjoyed watching this, please consider subscribing. If not, that's totally all right. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.